Hey everybody. Hi everybody. This is Mike Chestnut uh, with you. I went, I talked to you yesterday and today I kind of want to clarify because I really, you get on here and sometimes the microphone and the camera comes on and you're, you become a hot mess and um, everything doesn't come out as right as I want it to come out. Um, I told you yesterday about a letter I received. Here's the letter that I got, and I've had time to look over it and, and think about it and then listen to the video that I did. And as I was doing that, I didn't really go say what I wanted to say because I got stuck on, on the church. And the reason why I did is because uh, the letter kind of struck me a little bit. When someone tells me they go to their pastor and... Uh, looking for help and especially in the situation that they're in and they don't really get it it breaks my heart you know and um that's this letter um a lot of things about this letter breaks my heart and and not just this letter but phone calls and other things that i'm receiving from other people uh just where you're at in life and i i was miserable for so long that it tears me up now that when I see that on other people and I want to do the best that I can in my life to help other people get through these hardships and hard times. As I wrote my book and I, I hate, I, I'm probably driving everybody crazy because I talk about my book all the time, but man, when you read the book, you're going to understand I put myself out there. I really laid it out there I didn't hold back on anything and in fact I I have some people it's funny because uh, they looked at the legalistic parts of it when I talked about my dad not allowing me to go to prom and we're caught up on that you know rather than you know there was a, a missionary that molested me and for years I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody you know or the fact that I felt inadequate and just some of the other things that that got bypassed because to somebody else going to prom was so much more important than the other things that happened or the fact of some of the things that i talk about pornography and other things that happened and those were my vices and that was the things that's how the enemy got me and if you know anything about um sexual abuse uh sexual abuse with people when that happens um your mind's messed up about sexuality and all that. So I, I don't want to get on a rabbit trail about that. Um, but what I do want to do is I, I want to share you. It's more than just about going to church and everything. But that's, that's a great premise to start off. And so let me clarify what I said yesterday. I go to a church that is loving and they accept me where I'm at doesn't mean they accept my sin. They don't accept me doing what's wrong. And if, and if they see that, the, they will, you know, in love, come call me out on it. But they love me in spite of where I've been and who I've been, but for who I am in Christ. And that's really important because when we're talking about the things that Jesus Christ is doing in our lives right now, and I want to be intentional. And, that, and yes, that's my word, intentional. Look at look at the thing there. It says intentional guy. I want to be intentional. Why? Because for so many years I wasn't. So in my devotional, me, Dwayne, and um, Jamie are going to be hitting that this uh, next week in a vlog and in, in our podcast that we're doing. But there's a couple things that I think are very important that I that I left out. Yes, going to church is very important. A lot of people step out of church and because you're hurt and for many years me and my wife got out of church and i'm going to be honest with you people who have kids um it hurts the kids more than it hurts anybody else um so being in church is very crucial because you need that community what i was trying to say yesterday is make sure that you're not in um, a toxic environment but that you're in a healing environment where god wants to heal you Another thing is you need to be in the word of God. 
I found that was really important, being in the Word of God every day. Now, let's not get legalistic about it. If you miss a day, that's not the end of the world, right? But I intentionally get up every day looking to serve God and be the best man that I can. Because in my past, I didn't. And I walked in life like a zombie, and I was not focused on anything. And so what happens is when you do that, the enemy is going to then put stuff in your path to guide you. See, I want God to guide me. And the best way to do that is to be in the word of God. And you're going to have to get away with away from some of the things that maybe you were taught in there. My goal is to read the Bible every day and to grow every day. And I may read a little bit more each day, or I may read a little bit less, but I'm looking at the content of it. And I'm asking God, to talk to me for the longest time i couldn't pray and now i can and if you're in that place now i said this yesterday but what you need to do is go to that place where the lord makes intercession for you and you just say please god change my desires to be your desires make your desires mine because no matter how hard i wanted to do life and be good and be who i needed to be i had put so much bad stuff in my life we Get out of life what we pour into it, what we pour into it. So I want to ask you this. What positive things are you pouring into yourself each day? Now, I just gave you two things. We need to read the word of God and we need to pray. That is a give me and every minister is going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you another thing that you need to do is you need to read. And I'm going to put a link in here um, where you can hear um, someone who gives a, a lesson on a pod in a, a group that I'm at about how to read. And let me tell you, reading has changed my life because now I'm pouring into me. I, I'm choosing what to pour into myself. I find that reading is very important. At first I couldn't read. I started off with um, audible books, but what it did was it removed the negative things for me. And I, I started reading things that, what, what would help me? One of the things was Crashing the Chatterbox by um, Stephen Furtick. That was one of the things I read because the enemy has had my ear for so long and he lies to me all the time. And, you know, I went around saying I hated myself. And I, I did. I hated me. But then I said, I hate life. I was with a, a loved one of mine the other day and they said, you know, they were asking, are you okay? And, kept going on about just something seems different. Well, what's, what's different in me is that I have gotten victory in my life and now I act in a totally different way. I used to act out. I used to be inappropriately funny and other stuff because what I wanted was um, to make you laugh. I wanted to make you see that, look, aren't I a funny guy? You'll, you'll like me this way because the truth is if, if I don't do this and they know who I really am, they're not going to like me, you know? And why did I think that? Because I didn't like myself. Um, back during Hurricane Sally, me and my wife were in a bad car wreck, and, and I've, I've received counseling since then. It's been one of the best things that happened to me. But I'm just going to encourage you, find stuff to read that is going to help you. And if you're, you know, some people are dyslexic or have different issues and reading's hard. Get, get Audible. Get the Audible book. Invest in that. I think it's $15 a month. Very well worth it. You know, we'll put money into Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff. Um, and we end up pouring into us, ourselves from things, from those videos that we shouldn't probably watch anyways that aren't being positive or whatever. So invest in that that's something that you can do if you struggle with reading i'm going to tell you it changed my life another thing that i want to tell you to do is remove the chaos in your life and how do you do that that's really a difficult thing to do because sometimes we don't have control over it right 12 step program has it great though control the things that you control you can control everything else that you cannot control you're going to have to give that to god one of the things that I hate hearing is when someone tells me I feel stuck. 
God does not want you to feel stuck. He doesn't want you to live a f this life and at the end of this life have no purpose or meaning to it. But you have to seek God and ask him, God, what is my purpose? What is your intention in my life? Why do you have me in this relationship that I can't get out of? And truth is, can you not get out of it? Or could it be that you're addicted to the punishment that you're getting from that relationship? And, and do I know people like that? Yes, I do. But we have to remove whatever that chaos is. Um, I'm not someone that throws away people. I don't, I don't like that because I felt thrown away my, my whole life. But there are some people who are toxic. And, you know, you're going to have to limit your time with them because them being around you does not make you healthy. And if they can't see that and they're not willing to change, then they're making the choice not to hang around you. You're putting out some healthy boundaries that will help you to be a little healthier, right? Um, I'm going to tell you, set goals, make goals. And, and if you're not someone who, who write goals out and has goals, let's start simple, okay? Um, let's start with small goals every day. Pick three things today that you want to accomplish. So when you get up tomorrow, write it out. Tonight, before you go to bed, what are the three things that you want to accomplish tomorrow? Be a goal-oriented person. And every day, then add a little bit more to that. Because when we create that structure in us, it gives us a little bit more purpose. And then we're not sitting there in idle time. And then the enemy isn't putting other things in us. And we're not full of chaos of things that not of God. So be purposeful in planning your day. Okay? Even if it's as simple as I'm going to mop the kitchen floor. That's a great goal. Because you're cleaning, right? You're cleaning something. You're making your area a good place to live. I think you should make a goal. I'm going to give some time to God today. Where, when, make that choice. Do that decision. Make it. But set some goals. Maybe that goal is going to be, you know what? I'm going to reach out to a friend of mine who's really positive and just spend an hour with them today because I need that positivity in my life. Set goals. Goals are really important. Another thing that I want to tell you is serve. Serve other people. It's really important to do. Um, one of the biggest ways that I, I, you'll read my book, and I came through a conflict in there, and um, I, got, I was working in production because I love videography and all that stuff, you know? And um, I had to get out of it, and, I, and for the longest time, I wasn't doing anything. And one of the minister, Alex, came up to me, and he said, Mike, you need to be serving. And he said, look, why don't you go serve in the kids' ministry? And I'll be I don't, don't want to serve in the kids' ministry. But he said, I need someone in production. We, so long story short, you, can, you read it. Most of you have read it in my book. I got involved in it. Well, when the wreck happened, I had to step back from children's ministry. but also. Um, God's leading me in a different area now. Now, I really feel like God's leading me into men's ministry, and I'm really wanting to help men. But I'm going to tell you that I love working with kids, too. And this past Sunday, uh, Renee Johnson at church came up to me and, and asked me the following week, would you mind filling in? They didn't have anyone to be there for that, for Big City. And um, I just, I was like, yeah, you know, I can do a week. And I went up there, and I'm going to tell you something. I was so blessed by those children in Big City Sunday. One girl who hadn't been there for a long time, she came up. And, and me and her probably been gone about the same amount of time from Big City. And it was like a nice little reunion. She has one of these smiles that just captures your heart, you know. But all the kids are that way. I had a great time because when you're serving others, you're getting outside of yourself a little bit. And our church should give you a place to serve. But know, know what, are, what is stuff that you like to do and know what you don't like to do, okay? And if they lead you to somewhere where you just don't have a love for it, what are you going to do if you're, if you're involved? Let's say I'm doing kids ministry. I don't love kids. Well, am I going to be good at it? No. Is there a need there? Yes. 
but God will fill that need. Okay. Now, if I was wrong in the beginning, I thought, I don't love working with kids, but God was moving me. And I, I was like, okay, I'll try it. And then I ended up, I loved it, you know? So there's a difference in what you want and what God wants sometimes. Right. But I'm going to tell you, serve, serve other people. That's going to help you. We have to get outside of ourselves. I found freedom this past year. And I'm going to give a shout out to Ron Weber and to Pastor Tim Payne for never giving up on me and my wife back when we didn't want to go to church. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that they never gave up on on us. And I have other people in my life, Amy, Leslin, other people who have just, you know, saw something in me that I couldn't see. And it brought freedom into my life. From the messages that I'm getting from people, from the letters that I'm getting from people, from the phone calls I'm receiving from people, people feel stuck and enslaved by the enemy. And I know that someone who's watching this right now feels that way, that you feel enslaved by the enemy. And you have a great depression that's over you. I am living proof that God can redeem you from that. He can restore you. I did not think God would ever restore me, nor did I think God ever wanted to. I felt like I needed to be punished, and therefore I punished myself daily. Listen, I'm trying to speak from my heart today to you because just so many people hurting god doesn't want you to hurt but if you don't want to hurt he's going to give you tools but you got to do something you've got to take action in your own life and so it starts with one step so i'm going to ask you take some of this that i've given you today and start taking some steps but i'm going to tell you you know where I found restoration? In the relationships that God placed in my life. The Michael Collins in my life. And if you don't know who Michael Collins is, read my book. There's a good, there's a good, there's a good way to do that, right? He was one of the first men who really showed me who God was. And I was a minister, you know? Um, but you need good friends, good godly friends in your life. Me and my wife haven't got to see our best friends for a week or two right now. Um, not really. And it, it's affecting us because they make us better and hopefully we make them better, but we love doing life with Gary and Michelle, you know? And so, you know, who do you have in your life like that? Think about it. You know, ask God to give you those friendships. Ask God to, to build those relationships for you. Ask God to bring those people into your life. If you want freedom and you want healing and if you want to get away from the depression and the oppression, it, it requires action on your part. I want to just come on here today and I wanted to encourage you um, but I wanted to be a little bit more specific today on those. And these are things that, to be honest, I wrote them in my book, Intentional um, Man. It's a devotional. Um, we're getting ready to do a podcast. So I welcome you to watch it. We're going to do all eight chapters on here and talk about them. So I recommend you do that. It's it's Intentional Man, but I'm going to be honest. There's principle in here for women, too, that you will get as much out of it as the men will. But I'm really hoping that some fathers, some sons will want to do this. But that's not what this is about today. But that's where I, I've got some of these principles from today that I'm, I'm giving to you. Because these are the things that I learned at the church that I serve at right now, at Momentum. And these are some of the things that um, people there have taught me. And so now I want to pay it forward to you. And I hope today that you get a little bit of a blessing out of what you're hearing from me. And remember, God does love you, and God wants to heal you. Do you want it? Quit hanging on 
to the things that are destroying you and start looking forward to God. A uh, pastor of mine that I worked for, Larry Lilly, used to end every program with, Christ, I am tougher than the tough things of life. Maybe that's something that you need to say today. With Christ, I am tougher than the tough things of life.